Mike Hankin. I'm the CEO of Brown Advisory, an investment firm. And the, the name of my talk is Speak Up, Where It Counts, and Loudly. And Mike, there's a reason why we pull you right from the red carpet right. after your talk. It's really good. So how was it out there? How was the experience overall today? It was good. It was, uh, I definitely was nervous a few minutes before, even though I speak a lot. But once I got going, I got into what I cared about. And that kept me going because my focus was on trying to deliver the message in a way that people understood what I was thinking rather than performing. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a big difference in my mind. We're all here because we care about something. And at some point, a few weeks ago, we wrote down our thoughts. And then rather than trying to just say what we were thinking at the time, we try to remember all those words. It's a lot easier if we just get up there and say, here's the topic, here's what we care about, just speak to it. And I think when I got up there after the first minute, and the crowd was good because they, they did something uh, pretty early on and applauded. And, and that, I knew that they were with me. So that then propelled me a little further. So it was better. I'm glad I did it. Mm -hmm. It was your scuba photo. It was great. Got yeah. that first laugh. It was really good. God. So you, you started this by saying understanding, right? Having the audience really understand what your talk is all about. And a lot of TEDx speakers, they say they can almost feel and see the energy, the reciprocity of that understanding about their talk. And everyone here knows who you are, clearly. Right. Uh, could you could you see that? Could you, could you sense that connection with the TEDx audience here tonight? So, looking out there, the lights are pretty bright, for sure. But you can see people, and there was a lady off to the left and a gentleman behind her. I think I know who the lady is. I don't know who the gentleman is, and they were engaged. They were bobbing their heads in reaction to what I was saying. There was somebody over to the right. Also, I couldn't see that person as well, but I could see them moving. So, and then there were a few times they they laughed and applauded at the photo of me with the uh, the snorkel mask. But there were some other times where it wasn't quite the same as getting an amen in church if you're given a a sermon. But I could tell they were they were listening to what I was saying rather than just watch me perform. And that, that made me feel good. Mm -hmm. It's like the, uh, the proof of engagement. You really know that they're, they're with you. Right? Yeah. yeah. Ajit was there too. Mm -hmm. I, I could see him smiling. He had encouraged me before to smile. So when I smile and he smiled and that made me smile more. So I had a, a young lady who works with us who was changing my slides. My own tip is get somebody to change slides. It's, I've tried it, clicking it, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So, and she was giving me the signal a couple of times to smile and that helped. I sort of laughed back to her. So it, it, was, it was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really good. So one of the questions that, this is really one of Adjit's favorite. <clears throat> he really wants to know deep down what it is that the reason why someone wants to deliver a TEDx talk. What makes you want to do a TEDx talk? I think uh, it's a combination of something that I really care about. And I think that if I do it, not that I'll do it any better, but on my own case, because I am a CEO, if I do it, people will listen. And I, I want people to speak up more. In my case, it's not about the harbor. It, it's, it's not about Charlottesville, even though I care deeply about both of them. I care about CEOs speaking up because I know people listen. As I was saying to, to you before, politicians can count votes. So if you put the clout of a sizable employer 
behind an issue, people will listen in a way that they won't if you're not that CEO. And the Harbor Project, when I got involved, there were some really good people. They know a lot more about the science of it than I do. But they were missing some of the urgency that a business person would put to something, setting goals, holding people accountable. Mm -hmm. They were also missing the clout of a business leader. And, I, and I, I knew that if I didn't do that, it was unlikely that in this community, somebody was gonna do it. This is good, this is good. So I have one main question left, and then you've actually already answered the final one, which is tips for future TEDx speakers. But Mike, if you were to, I know it's, you've already had to boil down the message into a, a short talk, but if you could really consolidate your leadership message to all the leaders out there and have them walk away with one core tip so that they could be better leaders, what would you want to resonate with them? Appreciate the position that they hold, the footprint, the platform, and a responsibility goes with that. So don't shy away from it. Your employees expect it, your community expect it, expects it, and your family looks up to you. And I don't want people to keep their heads down. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not helping. And when, when the younger colleague of mine said, why did you take so long? It really did yeah. stun me. And I can tell you, there was a written piece that I put out on our blog and it literally took me two days back and forth with people in the firm saying, should I say this? People would think I'm being political. So the team helped, but if I hadn't put something out there, it would have been missing. And I want CEOs and business leaders to know it would be missing if they don't step up. I love that, it's good. Final question, I'll let you go. Thank you so much so far, this is great. I know that there's a lot of leadership lessons that can be learned from you. You've done a lot of speaking, so you can call on all, all of your prior years, but what tips do you have, since now you're a TEDx speaker, alum, <laughs> What, what tips do you have for future TEDx speakers? You've been through the whole process, ridden the wave. So I guess one is to remember your message. So mine was divided in chapters and with some advice from others, I tried to force myself to think in the next chapter, next paragraph, what was I thinking? And so just keep thinking about what you're trying to tell people. You're telling a story. Don't just focus on the words. That's one thing, the clicker we talked about. The best speakers fump at a word. It's my word. The best, best speakers, and nobody notices. You just sort of move on from it. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people will give you advice about pausing, smiling. It's really good advice. But you're here because you care about something. So just just stick to that and you and people will do fine.